singe your nostril hair and all this stuff and they know how to really do all the cooking like saute and scallions and things like that at your dinner table at high, cl high class restaurants and uh, little did I know this guy wanted a relationship with me too and my answer was always you know I'm not a sellout I'm not going to sell out I'm not going to sleep with anybody to make it to the top I'm not going to sleep with anybody to make a living I'm not going to prostitute myself and I'm not going to be anybody's girlfriend, boyfriend, for money, whatever. I was going to stick to my uh, um, morals and scruples, my upbringing, what my mom taught me, the little that I learned in school. And uh, I was going to work my way out of my situation or die trying. And um, so Dave gave me a job. And uh, I worked in the office buildings did like got off around three o'clock sat on the corner and if I had any sandwiches left over I would sell them on the corner and I'd get one for lunch with a box of juice or something and so here I am I'm getting fed I'm getting money I'm working I'm getting exercise I'm in office buildings I'm getting accepted and I'm homeless living in LA and it was absolutely awesome I mean the nights were pretty uh, lonely, sleeping behind that grass catcher in a subterranean parking garage. But um, I ended up going out to clubs and buying drinks and hanging out and just trying to meet people and socialize because I had been socializing since I was about five years old. Anyway, if you've ever heard any of my other stories. So I was socializing and engaged, man, and uh, ended up meeting Marino moving down with him the first night I was with him he thought he had met someone that could be lovers with him. I was like damn man you know I don't share anybody's bed with them that I don't care about or I don't I'm not into this other culture of sexuality um, I'm strictly heterosexual and he appreciated that and we ended up being roommates for a year until I, I just got into the whole L.A. culture and started partying too hard. And uh, I think I had a bad episode on LSD. And people were just giving me things. I mean, I was singing at clubs down in uh, um, Santa Ana. I was going to clubs. We went to this one called Hoagie Bar Michaels. Um, there was another one right around the corner from us. And this band wanted me to sing with them. So I'd sing with them for free. And a lot of the jobs that I have and that I've gotten from the past have been from uh, um, um, working for people and showing them what I can do and then getting a job as, as an employee once they saw what I can do. I got bouncer jobs that way. I got jobs at uh, stores like that. I've gotten jobs... Um, where I've watched people do their work and then when they disappear I do their work for them and when they come back all the work is done like pricing foods and stuff like that I mean I was doing this as a kid anyway so in my early 20s I was doing this in LA I was actually helping Dave fix the uh, barbecue chicken in the morning and I think he had an alternative cold cut sandwich too but the barbecue chicken sandwich was the bomb and so I ended up Leaving that job, leaving this this kid who I met, who ended up becoming uh, uh, more involved in motion pictures and uh, 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 doing TV, movie, and film, and is really well known now for that. He's a really good actor. Um, I don't know if he still remembers me, but we had a chance to do a movie when I got him back home in D.C. because I had joined the union back in 1983, 84, but uh, I had come in on the tail end of the movie and they were past production, but I ended up working with uh, St. Elmo's Fire. I helped design Demi Moore's apartment and uh, 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 picked out a bunch of Art Deco things because I was managing an Art Deco store. So I worked with a lot of the guys when they came to town to do St. Elmo's Fire and ended up as an extra in the movie on a street scene. I don't know. It's probably on the cutting room floor where a lot of my work <laughs> ended up. But um, 
nonetheless, um, I um, ended up living with Marino for about a year. I ended up working for Steve Wozniak uh, when he got his first $80 million, uh, an Apple computer. He put on a three-day, three-night concert called Us Festival, and it was a uh, United in Song acronym. And uh, I had tried for months to get that job, and I had heard about an earlier concert called Peace Sunday in uh, Pasadena and ended up as a production and security staff for that concert and also because of the fact that they had short-sighted themselves and needed stage front graphics they didn't have anyone to do it and and I'm always within earshot of opportunity they said you know we need a graphic artist and I volunteered I said I can do it and they said can you and I said yeah and I, they told me what they wanted. They wanted uh, nuclear disarmament, a nuclear disarmament, peace with justice, and slogans like that on the front of the stage. So I made some plumb lines across the front of the stage, and uh, uh, um, I uh, did all of the, of the stage front graphics by hand. This concert ended up in the newspapers, and uh, uh, in video, uh, Joan Baez was there, Jackson Brown, Stevie Nicks and Tom Petty had done Stop Dragging My Heart Around. I got to meet David Lee Roth and in an empty field, uh, asked him what he thought about the stage front graphics and if Van Halen was playing there. And he said, no, we're not playing. Uh, I met LeVar Burton, uh, uh, Penny Marshall, uh, uh, a lot of people were there. Gil Scott Heron, Stevie Wonder, um, uh, it's just a lot. Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young had reunited to do this, and Pat Benatar was there, and I was uh, stage right security during the concert. I helped break down the stage, and I did the stage front graphics by myself for that concert. So uh, George Travis, I'll never forget him. He was the stage manager. And when he was he was working backstage for uh, Steve Wozniak's Us Festival concert in '82 in San Bernardino, California, and uh, I got to work for Steve Wozniak. And um, I uh, what he did was he took his money. He made about he got his first check from Apple Computer. They became successful, and he didn't let anybody know. And he had gotten married and had a child. And so he wanted to put together a concert that united people in song that was simulcast to Russia at the time. And so he spent six months turning a Natural Valley Amphitheater into a concert uh, uh, amphitheater. And to date, I believe it's a national state park now. And he was uh, the the initiator of it. And he spent like $16,000. He gave... The, he got uh, Bill Graham from Bill Graham Presents to do the whole concert background uh, lineup. And some of the bands that were there were the Police, the Talking Heads, Oingo Boingo, Fleetwood Mac, the Grateful Dead, Pat Benatar, Jerry Jeff Walker, Eddie Money, the B-52s. I mean, the lineup was off the charts. Santana was there. And I um, tried for the entire time to get a job there and, and I couldn't get hired. They kept, the uh, administration kept belaboring and belaying and this, that, and the other. And finally, my roommate wanted to go, Marino, and he said, let's go. And I and I was disenchanted, disheartened. And I said, I don't really want to go. It's going to be, it's not going to be the same. I was so looking forward to working for this concert. And, um, he said, I got you a ticket, and I, I was like, oh, yeah? All right, we'll go. So we drove down there that night, and I was in a funk, and I had met two of his friends from Trieste, uh, Adarina and Nevio, Litsak, and uh, we all went together, and we drove his uh, yellow Volkswagen down there, and they had a Volkswagen bus. They were actually... 
tour in the United States sleeping in a Volkswagen bus, uh, Nevio and Ederina. And so we all drove down there that night and we got there and they set up camp and everything. And, and I just said to myself, you know what? I can't do this. I don't want to be out in the audience in the heat, spending money on food, spending money on this, that, and the other. I want to work this concert. So I walked down this dirt road till the sun came up, telling everybody I was going backstage to meet up with Travis. And I didn't even know Travis was there. And so uh, the sun came up backstage, and it's like 8 in the morning, 7 in the morning. And I got all the way backstage at the gate, and they wouldn't let me in. And lo and behold, who's standing in front of me but um, Mr. Concert himself, uh, uh, Bill Graham. And this guy was an absolute jerk. I mean, he was like cut and dry, to the point, no frills, no no, no fillers. I mean, I, I looked at him, and it's like my roommate knew his niece because Marino had met her on the uh, love boat, the the Italian princess, now the Pacific princess. And so I, I said, hey, Mr. Graham, how you doing? He said, hi. And I, I, I was talking to him, and a few other people were there. And I asked him, I said, do you know Marino Devo? And he said, no. And I said, well, he knows your niece. And, he, and, he, and while I was saying that, he, he just yelled over me. He said, I said no, didn't I? Well, that's the end of it. And I was like, oh, my God, who is this guy? You know, and then all of a sudden, lo and behold, who comes up with George Travis? And I was like, Travis? I said, what? I said, are you managing this? And he, he was like, no, I'm not, but I'm assisting in management. I, I was like, man, I've been trying to get on the roster to work this concert for for months. And he told the, the guys in security and production, he said, you see this guy? He said, if you needed someone that works and is good, this is your guy. I got hired that minute. After he after he said that sentence, I got hired, and I worked the US Festival for the next three or four weeks. It was a three-day, three-night concert, and then we had to tear it all down using industrial-sized forklifts and taking down steel and everything. And I mean, I've got a whole video on the story of that um, uh, for... Uh, us Festival and Unison, because after 30 some odd years, they finally re released the uh, the docudrama video or the documentary on the music and and the groups and stuff like that. So I got hired and I I worked for Steve Wozniak. Steve was giving me water and juice and all this other stuff from a pit right on stage with his with his newborn and his wife, and it was one of the most awesome concerts. And this was my first experience in L.A. I mean, I found work. When when I got done with the US Festival, I worked at South Coast Plaza off MacArthur at Sears. And then I worked at a health food store. And I was living with Marino. And then I started partying, getting sidetracked. And eventually uh, ended up at shows with, like, Marilyn Monroe lookalikes and dancers and stuff like that. And uh, left L.A., barely by the skin of my teeth because I partied out, overdosed on some LSD or something like that, and I ended up in San Diego and hitchhiked from San Diego back to Washington, D.C., back to my mom's house and came back here and started working in Georgetown again at uh, retail stores and doing storefront signs and windows. But that was my, that was my um, excursion to... Uh, the West Coast. I'd always wanted to get to the West Coast, has the sunshine, and the girls all get so tan, beach boy ideology, and end up crawling out of there and making it out by the skin of my teeth. Uh, got baptized in the Pacific Ocean by this pastor and, and uh, ended up uh, uh, living on the streets of San Diego for a while before I hitchhiked from there through the biggest storm that ever hit that area of Flagstaff, Arizona in 83, I want to say, and uh, was walking in it and walking through Arizona, seeing rocks balanced on, on like pyramid shaped rocks and, and uh, getting rides by truckers and stuff like that. It was, it was absolutely awesome. I had a uh, absolutely great time on the road. People were very nice to me. 
I don't think I have any bad stories about being on the road. I remember um, um, eating at a diner and then someone saying a snowstorm is coming and I was in Flagstaff, like 7,000 feet elevation. And a trucker made a U-turn to pick me up and pick me up and let me sleep in his bed in the back of the cab while he drove. And we ended up, he ended up letting me off in Oklahoma someplace and gave me his last two bucks. And I made it into D.C. I think it took me four days, maybe five, to hitchhike from San Diego back to Washington, D.C. But I walked and hitchhiked across the United States, walking sometimes, hitchhiking sometimes, sleeping under bridges in the rain, twice. And that was quite an adventure. And I had quite a heavy good time.